Lord Jesus, have your way, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Hello, everyone. Um, you know, the Lord is just kind of weighing on my heart. You know, and uh, he sacrificed. So we we uh, we we've got to sacrifice, right? We've got to be obedient. Um, you know, what did Jesus come to this earth for? You know, what did he come for? What was his purpose? You know, what was his purpose? His purpose was simply to save us from ourselves. You know, he came here to save us from ourselves, from our fallen nature. Because in each of us is a fallen nature from the Garden of Eden. There's nobody, you know, there's no big me's and little you's that we're all fallen. And he came for that reason, to save us, to die for us, to, to forgive us for our sins, to to resurrect us in his righteousness and I want to start with um, Luke 7 39 Luke 7 39 Lord Jesus have your way now this is a, a story of I want to give a little back this is a story of Jesus and he went to I believe Simon yes he went to the Pharisee Simon's house to eat dinner right so, now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself. Now, what he saw was Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene poured, let's see, yes, she had the alabaster oil. She had very expensive oil. And she poured it on Jesus. And she actually wiped his feet with her hair and her tears. She wept at his feet and she wiped his feet with her hair and her tears. And um, so, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, This man if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered. Now, think about that. Pause for a moment. <laughs> he was thinking to himself, and Jesus was reading his thoughts. <laughs> and Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, Teacher, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with, what, with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? <laughs> Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you have rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss. But this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, have your way, Jesus. I can feel... Yes, God is so good. 
you know I want to I want to talk about the church you know and what what Jesus intended for the church and I, I want this to be you know um, as timely as possible I like to make it 20 minutes to me is great um, but I want the spirit to have as well I want to pray I want to pray thank you Jesus Lord Jesus I thank you for whatever it is you want to say Lord I say have your way let your spirit speak through me remove me Lord Jesus you say whatever it is that's on your heart Lord and I thank you Jesus in your name amen thank you Jesus hallelujah thank you Jesus you know what is it that we want out of our walk you know what is it that we are are looking for you know with this walk with Christ do we realize do we realize that we put the nails in his wrists do we realize that each one of us every single one of us in the whole world put the nails on Jesus in Jesus wrist Jesus yes you see this is a message that may not be popular and the enemy might not like this message but it's very real okay the fact of the matter is you know for the church for us as believers of Christ believers in God do we really realize that each and every one of us no matter what we've done right, no matter what we've done wrong, we each were the cause of the Lord Jesus being nailed to the cross. Why? Because he died for all of our sins. Okay? It seems sometimes that, you know, as, as people in the church, you know, we can, um, we can believe that, you know, we're, we're better somehow and, and somehow, you know, we, no, we didn't do that. No, we all did it. Each one of us, we have nailed him to the cross just by being born into this fallen world. It, it we're fallen by nature. We all had a part in it. You know, um, you can be too holy to reach God's people. You can be, you know, and, and I don't mean holiness. You know, the holiness of God is just the holiness of God. And without that, no one will see him, okay? But you can be, you know, so religious-minded and so... Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit, to deliver what you want to say. To deliver what you want to say. You can have so many words, but not enough action. You can have, you know, all these laws and all this knowledge, but it's just in your head. You know, it hasn't reached your heart. And so you fail to reach God's people. You know, Jesus said a prayer. When he was in the garden, I'm, I'm almost certain he said a prayer to the Lord in John 17 and part of it was you know father I've I've given them your word and they've believed me but also I pray for those who will believe in me through their word that I came into the world you know how do we how do we reach people when we think we're better okay how do we reach people when we have our head up so far in the air and we think we know everything you know we just God is grieved you know he suddenly just put it on my heart and it's so real it is what what he's got to say is so real you know we cannot just sit in a pew we cannot just sit in a pew every Sunday and think that's enough 
We cannot because, honestly, we won't even make it into the gates that way. And we certainly aren't going to win anybody else. We aren't because we tend to, you know, look down on people when Jesus was drawn to the rejected. Jesus was drawn to the sinners. Jesus was drawn to the sick. Jesus was drawn to the outcasts. The outcast is actually what? <laughs> Who he spoke to throughout the Bible. The outcast is... Yeah, it's who he spoke to. It's, it's who he was drawn to. It's, it's who he showed love to. He, in fact, the religious people, they just, they couldn't seem to get the love of God in their hearts. They just, they couldn't seem to understand, you know, why was Jesus so radical? Why was he, you know, so bent on, on loving these people that, oh, well, you know, they're sick and, oh, they're sinners and they're not good enough. And, you know, what do we do when we see someone come into church? You know, we look at them. We, we talk about them. We, we don't pray for them. And we certainly are not doing what God wants us to do, which is to deny ourselves. You know, because if we... Jesus, you know, the church is in trouble. You know, if the church was in the right position and place, the world wouldn't be the way it is. Things wouldn't be happening the way they are. You know, and... God is asking us, you know, have we truly examined our own hearts? You know, have we truly repented? Do we realize that in our flesh, in ourselves, that our hearts are wicked? That there's nothing good in us? That all our works are just filthy rags to Him? You know, He requires us to be led by his spirit and his spirit it, it reaches out to the lost his spirit it reaches out to the rejected his spirit comes close to the broken his spirit comes and loves on those who the world has rejected and the world has called no good you know the church has got to be the great physician for the people who need him the most. You know, how many Christians just in America do we have? How many? How many churches? How many Christians? You know, and then how many are actually on fire for the Lord? How many are actually setting their eyes on heaven? We're so caught up in the world and in ourselves and our pride and all the things of this life that we have forgotten. We have forgotten about what really matters. What did Jesus come to the earth for? He came for the lost. He came for sinners like us. You know, he said, he said, what you do to the least of them, you do to me. And in this parable in Matthew 25, he was speaking to those who would be the sheep and the goat. He was, he was speaking of his separation, of when he comes, when he comes to separate the sheep and the goat. And he's going to say, well, no, you know, you, you didn't do to me what I asked you to do. You didn't feed me. You didn't clothe me. And they're going to say, Lord, when did we see you? You know, we have got to be his servants. We are a selfish people in the church. We, we have forgotten what God really wants. We have forgotten what his whole plan is. We have forgotten it's about his children. And it's suddenly, he's just grieved. He's grieved. You know, it may... It's just not what he intended. Jesus did not come and die on the cross for us to be lukewarm. For us to sit in a pew on Sunday and think that that's serving God because it's not. It requires you to cry out at the altar for his children. For the people that need him. But you know the question is, 
do we know him? Have we came to a place where we begin to despise ourselves and our flesh and who we are by nature is nothing good. With Him, He can make our hearts amazing. You know, with Him we can do great things. But right now, many, many aren't even following His Spirit. They're falling to the spirit of the world. They don't even know. They're not reading their Bible. We're not reading our Bible. We're not really seeking His plan for our lives. We're not. And you know, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? We can pray to God. We can ask God one thing. Give me your eyes to see. Give me your heart for people. Give me your love. But we've got to really want it. You know, He gives us free will. We can choose each day, each moment, what, who we're going to serve. Are we going to serve Him? Or are we going to serve ourselves? The time has come for the judgment. The time has come for us to stop being lukewarm. Jesus. He's grave. He came and he died. And so many, they, they aren't even following his spirit. They're not listening to him. They're not loving other people. They're not giving their everything. You know, because it's what he intended. He gave everything. And then some. For us. For each of us. So that we might find a place where we can reach out to the outcast where we could reach out to somebody else you know none of us are justified in our flesh you know none of us are justified it's only Jesus you know we in fact you know we're no better we were no better we are worse than the people we look down on. We're worse than those who we consider lost. Those who we consider filthy. Those who we talk about. We're no better. You know, and we've got to do better. This might not be a popular message. I'm just listening to the Lord. And that makes me feel good. I know when I listen to Him, He's happy. We got to examine ourselves. It goes for me too. We all got to examine ourselves. We got to ask ourselves, are we really living this out? W would Jesus be honored every minute of every day what we're doing? Would He be honored with our thoughts and our intentions? Are we asking for His kingdom? Or are we more worried about this world and ourselves? There is not much time left and he'll be coming back to get a church, a bride without spot or wrinkle. I want to be a part of it. I want to be a part of it. And I want so many, as many, as, as, oh, everybody. Lord Jesus, help us, Lord Jesus, help us. Help me, help the church, help us all to be better, Lord. Help us. To sanctify ourselves in your word, Lord. Help us to see that you died so that we might live for you. Lord Jesus, help us. Set a fire in our souls. Set a fire in our souls, Lord. And I thank you, Jesus, in your name, amen. I hope this helps somebody. You know, Jesus loves the outcast. Jesus loves the rejected and it's sad that many, many, many have went to a church and been rejected. Instead of sought after in love, they've been rejected and shunned. You know, instead of us going out in the streets and, and giving the love of God, we worry about ourselves and what we have going on. Church, we got to do better. I love you all so much. God has a beautiful purpose. A plan for us let us get serious 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 